Okay, traders, today is Friday, June 15th, 2012. It is midday, and we are looking at the indices and a gauge of what should happen this afternoon, Sunday night, through Monday's trading, maybe a little more, not sure, but this should absolutely tell us what should happen going forward. Traders, one of the things that I will say is this. Well, let me say two things right off the bat. One, the cornerstone to technical analysis is repetitive pattern recognition, something I've been showing my classmates and my Omniacs for years on end, and something that I've been showing you in my last three or four videos because here it is. These are repetitive patterns. You have this one right here leads to this. You have another one right here, which we hope leads to this. Now, if you recall, three, four days ago, I started showing you this pattern and I put this parallel channel up here and basically said this is what should form fill in next. We should form some sort of a rally into this channel and it should fill in. That is what we expected and now here we are fully three days after I started showing this to you and we are starting to fill in. There it is. So, traders, this video is video number 880. It's the 880th video in a series of YouTube videos that we will continue to put out day after day, week after week to keep ourselves and keep our Omniacs in tune with what's going on in the markets moving forward. Traders, as we know, futures trading can be extremely risky and cause substantial financial loss. If you do not recognize that a stop is your best friend and you do not place your stops first, if you do not have risk capital to lose, you should not be trading futures. Futures trading is not suitable for all traders and all trading accounts. But there's a lot of cowboys out there that understand that futures can be a profitable thing if, in fact, you use analysis, you use stops, and you stay with it. All right, traders, so we are looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average Daily Bar Chart. The cornerstone to technical analysis clearly is repetitive pattern recognition. Repetitive pattern one, big, big rally. The same exact pattern, another rally is expected. Holding the 200 bar moving average was absolutely a clue that something may happen here. And then this inverted head and shoulders filling in really, really cemented the fact that something is going on. Traders, if you do not want to call this an inverted head and shoulders, you can just simply call this a bull flag. And if it is a bull flag, it is bullish, right? If this is a bull flag, it still makes it bullish. So if you didn't like the idea of a head and shoulders and you wanted to call this just a bull flag, it doesn't make it any less bullish than it is today. I say it's an inverted head and shoulders. The flag is part of an inverted head and shoulders. So we simply look at the head and shoulders and go for our projections from there. This is what we're looking at now. This is what we expect. So I believe that this will move us higher. We will fill this in. And in fact, trade is very interesting. If you take a look at where we were just a couple of days ago, here's where we were when I decided to start showing this and say that it likely is going to break out and go into that parallel channel. It is starting to do that because this was when, my, when I showed it to you and we add today back in and this is what it is now. We are literally heading right into this channel. So that's what the Dow Jones Industrial Average looks like and I agree with the market, I agree with the analysis and I think that we move higher. Now of course our stops will be in because it doesn't mean that within two days we won't come crashing back down. But I think that the fundamentals always come out in the charts first. And I think that just like this was a big fundamental that finally broke and we had our rally, this is a fundamental that will break this weekend or in the next few days and we will get our rally because that's why these patterns are on the charts. They're not on the charts because it's coincidence. They are not on the charts because inverted head and shoulders patterns felt like attacking our Dow Jones Industrial Average chart. They're all over the charts, not just here, around the world. With that in mind, let's look at others. Traders, inverted head and shoulder in the Dow Jones Transportation Average. Inverted head and shoulders, what does it lead to? A rally. Inverted head and shoulders, what does it lead to? A rally. Inverted head and shoulders, what should it lead to? A rally. Repetitive patterns are the cornerstones of accurate technical analysis. You see this one that rallies, you see that one that rallies, when you see a third one, if it 
you don't think it's going to rally, then you're not using analysis for what it was out there for us to use it as. Remember, this is an art, not a science. You're not calculating. You're not using calculus. There, there's some, you know, there's some certainly geometry, but you're not using calculus here. You're using angles and trend lines. We're not really adding and subtracting anything. We're using visuals. It's all very, very visual. When you look at the 200 bar moving average, traders, does anyone here sit here and do a calculation? Do you go back and calculate that 200 bar moving average day after day to see it's working? You look at it visually. You see it, you go with it. Well, this is the same thing. It's a visual look. And we all know this. This chart right here and every other chart you've ever looked at is merely a visual picture of fundamental news and traders' reaction to such. Here is the fundamental picture. The news will be coming out. It always comes out in the charts first. So your tranny looks very much like your Dow. Let's take a look at another. Traders, let's say there are some traders out there that are skeptical about an inverted head and shoulders. Okay, so let's look at the S&P and not call this an inverted head and shoulders. Let's just say the S&P just broke out of a big trend line and has now started a very nice parallel channel of which you should clearly head up to the top of this channel and that's enough to be very bullish. So if you're going to make it all the way up here and you know what let's just put some extension on here let's extend those out if we're going to end up all the way up here that's clearly bullish enough so whether or not you want to call this a parallel channel or you want to call this an inverted head and shoulders you should probably get the end result to be the same it is a bullish pattern no matter how we break it down so here we are Shoulder, head, shoulder, it's either that or let's not call it a head and shoulders. Let's just call it a parallel channel after breaking a major resistance line. And that is still a bullish call. Your indicators, of course, are equally as bullish. Let's look at the NASDAQ. Traders on the NASDAQ, clearly the same picture. Clearly, we simply cannot discount what we see on all of these charts. It's one after the next, after the next, the parallel channel is very likely to fill in. Um, there have been very many analysts that have come by in the last few days and have written some things on the videos and wrote some emails and came into our chat rooms to challenge the inverted head and shoulders to tell me it's not going to work because it's a bear market. I don't think we're in a bear market. We're in a channel moving lower or a bear leg of a bull market. We've started moving up from the price of 666 in S&P last September of 09. We've been moving up ever since. You couldn't fathom that to be a bear market. I will get to a chart that illustrates that before this is over, but we're not in a bear market. We were in a bear leg of an overall bull market, and a bullish pattern does work well in a bull market. Traders, just to be quick on that, this has been a bull market. This is not a bear market. Look at this red trend line down here. You cannot call that a bear market. It's a bull market that has been experiencing a bit of a, bear, of a bearish pullback. That doesn't make it a bear market. You need to stay focused on bigger pictures if you're going to come in my chat room and him and haw about we're us in a big bear market. Not when you pull up a weekly chart and look at that. That's not a bear market. Not by any analyst's standards on this planet. Anyone with a fresh set of eyes looks at this and says, okay, let's face it. The chart basically starts at the bottom of this picture and goes all the way to the top. Since 2009, when we hit the bottom, that's been a bull market, traders. Yes, it's had some pullbacks. It's not a bear market. So let's know what we're in before we come in the chat room and use our technical muscles. All right, guys, let's just look at the big chart first. So we are in a bull market, and we've had a pullback. The NASDAQ that you're looking at now, the one that we looked at a second ago, was just the same chart. I only flipped it to a weekly. Boom, same chart. The tranny looks like that. The industrial average looks like that. The S&P looks like that. We know what the, what, the, what the weeklies look like. The daily is what we're concerned with. We're day traders. The daily is clearly pointing higher right now. Let's look at another chart, traders. Look at the bond chart. 
Look at the bond chart, the 30-year bond chart. I don't know that this is ever going to be bearish again <laughs> because bonds obviously don't want to be ever be bearish again, it seems. You look at this chart, they just want to go up, up, up. Even when they put in some kind of a top six months ago or three months ago, they just came roaring right back. This is what you would think is possibly a head and shoulders topping pattern. I don't want to call the top in bonds. I just want to note this. It is under the trend line slightly, or it's testing below this major trend line right here, and it is a major trend line. And it does have an upright head and shoulders, which could be bearish, but I am not calling bonds bearish. Just letting you know that that does have a picture that should make us come down slightly. So even bonds are pointing towards the downside, while NASDAQ, S&P, Trani, and Dow are pointing towards the upside. But we can take a quick tour of Europe if you want. Let's go look. Traders, when you look at the German DAX on a daily bar, clearly it is starting this ascending bullish channel. We're in a parallel channel here, and it looks like it wants to continue along in that channel. Europe clearly has problems that the United States has begun to tackle over the last couple of years and has done a good job at least muting what those problems are on the home front. I don't know what will happen in the future. I'm not a politician, nor am I an economist. I look at graphs. But... The U.S. did do something that started to make the U.S. charts go up for the last couple of years. You have the DAX moving down right now, but look at the channel that's starting to form. It's not an inverted head and shoulders down here unless you really, really wanted to stretch the imagination. You'd have to do it this way. You'd have to say shoulder, head, and shoulder building. And you can slap one in there. But I say we pull those out of the way and trade what we see, not what we think it might be. And what we see is the parallel channel, and it is starting to move higher. So the German DAX looks like it wants to move higher. Traders, I'm going to show you the dollar index now, and then we'll look at Nikkei in a little while. Let's look at dollar index. When you look at the dollar index, traders, clearly it's giving us a little bit of a signal that it is getting tired up here and would like to head down for a little while anyway. All right, the dollar is starting to go into this channel now. It's starting to head lower. It likely wants to at least come down here. Look, here's how a lot of markets work. They go up, pull back, go up again. On the pullback, usually they stay above that previous high. That previous high was here. It did not stay above the previous high as of today. It's gotten lower. Maybe it wants to come down now and test this previous low. That coincides with our channel. That makes some sense to us. So the likelihood is that it now wants to come down and see what's happening down here. Is that going to be support? That brings us to a pretty decent area in our channel just in case it does hold down there. So the dollar showing weakness, the bonds possibly showing weakness, the DAX, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Trani, and the Dow showing strength. Let's go look at the euro currency. Trade is the euro doing basically the exact same thing. Look what's happening here. You have what could be or should be considered. Well, let's just do it this way. Let's draw this up completely different. Let's say, hmm, is this a little baby V bottom? All right, let's go with a totally different approach. Is this a little baby V bottom building here? So far, I like that. Have we gotten out of any trend lines that we've been stuck in lately? Well, yeah, not bad. So far, I like that too. All right, are we starting to build a parallel channel towards the upside? Let's look at that. And you go, hmm, that's starting to look likely as well, isn't it? So you can draw this up different ways and see what you want to get. Is it a bear flag? Well, certainly it could be a bear flag. This could be your flag, Paul, and this could be your flag minus the extensions, right? Take the extension off, and this could easily be a flag that's going to send us lower. So lots of ways to draw up the euro. Interesting though, not as many ways to draw up the dollar, not as many ways to draw up all of our US charts. The DAX didn't look as clear, the euro doesn't look as clear. That tells you that fundamentally, the problems that we're having are more in Europe than they are in the US. Fundamentals always come out in the charts first. So you see clearly you can look at the, and let me label what this chart is. This is your euro chart. All right, clearly you can draw this up as a bear flag, or you can say, all right, not the bear flag. You can draw it up as the V bottom and say, well, maybe it's bottoming. Or you can say, all right, maybe it's an inverted head and shoulders, a little teeny baby one like this. You could grab these four bars, 
you can grab this and you can grab these bars and say, okay, so maybe you had an inverted head and shoulders and it's finally breaking out. Lots of ways to draw up the Euro chart, but no one simple way to look at it, right? You see that there's more confusion in the European charts than there are in the U.S. charts. Thank goodness the U.S. clearly leads the way in most cases, and we are trading U.S. markets. So what do we do? Well, we don't go near the euro. We go like this. Goodbye everything on that chart. We won't trade you for a few days because we've seen something decent that we could have traded in NASDAQ and in the S&P. If you're a DAX trader, there's something there for you, but not as clear. If you're a dollar index, there's something there for you. And if you're a bond trader, but when you go and look at the euro and the DAX, really, they get a little bit tricky. But traders, it's not over there because, look, we can go elsewhere. And we can take a look at the Nikkei. And when you look at the Nikkei, clearly you see that we're having the same exact pattern. Inverted head and shoulders should lead to a rally. Now imagine the Japanese market having anything to do with an upward bullish signal. That's a little bit crazy. An upward bullish signal in the Japanese market, I mean, they've had nothing but trouble. Even they are, are getting the bullish signal. So with the Japanese market clearly showing it wants to go up too, and all the other markets that we looked at, you know, there's no argument here. Let's go back one more time. Traders, if we go back to the original chart that I brought to you, which I've been showing you for the last few days to illustrate why I expect the breakout, this is happening already. I was clearly looking to buy NASDAQ this morning. Missed it by a teeny bit, but we were ready to buy it. We see what's coming. We will buy pullbacks. Here was our reason why. I hope that this chart and the knowledge that the cornerstone to technical analysis is repetitive pattern recognition helps you moving forward and helps you in the next couple of days. Traders, thank you so much for joining my class today. I really, really hope that this will help you. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. 